But yeah, we take that truck out. We don't drive it into a storm because oh. my boss would kill me. He's like, you know, you dent it, you buy it. So we're not going to go there. <laughs> but um, yeah, we take it out. When severe weather's here, it's got a camera on the roof. We can look in all directions. And we feed that live back to the station because right. there's no truth like ground truth actually being there and seeing what's going on. Hey everyone, it's the Talk About It podcast. I'm Lauren Fulmer. I'm Victor Dantas. And today we have another fun episode. I'm excited to chat with you today, Andrew. Andrew Stutsky, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. It's it's good to be here. You guys have an impressive setup. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Hey, we you. have an impressive guest today. Uh, you, you've, been, you've been out on the big screen TV and uh, um, having some fun with WQAD, I understand. And uh, looking forward to just kind of chatting about that and um, how your journey of getting you uh, through all that is gone. So if you want to tell us a little just about yourself, Eric, uh, Andrew. <laughs> you got me twisted at Eric like Some days I might want to be an Eric. You never know. So. You can be Eric today. <laughs> you know. But sorry, yeah, tell us about yourself. Sure, yeah. So um, I'm a local guy. I grew up uh, just an hour east of the Quad Cities, and uh, that was back in Sterling. And my dream has always been to become a meteorologist. I mean, when I was young, storms scared the living daylights out of me, especially thunderstorms. They're so loud and so bright. And some of them were violent and some of them weren't. So um, having a lot of storm anxiety growing up, I kind of channeled that into a, a passion of mine, if you will. I wanted to know what made these things tick. Why did some towns get tornadoes out of them and some don't? Um, and that just really sparked my curiosity at a really young age. I would say five, six I knew right then and there that that's what I wanted to do. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, glued to the weather channel constantly growing up. Like mm -hmm. every time you walk in the living room, yep, he's got the weather channel on and he's watching them draw on the maps and do all this fun <laughs> stuff. So I, I just took that fear, turned it into passion and ran with it. Mm -hmm. So the whole weather channel, right? Like I'm glued to the NFL network. Mm -hmm. It's the only channel I watch. Only yeah. one. But so you're saying you're, you're very similar to that, but the whole weather. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It was watching the national forecast, watching the local on the eights. Like, I think I have that whole song playlist memorized from when I was growing up because I watched it so much. It's crazy. Awesome. So yeah. what, you, what you actually liked was the presenting it? Like you were kind of looking up to the people presenting or like... Or you liked more the actual the weather, the the storms and everything. So it's kind of a combination of both. I was I was in awe at just how composed the on air meteorologists okay. were, whether it was the Weather Channel or mm -hmm. Channel Eight that I grew up watching coincidentally as well. Just the, the fact that they could put that presentation together with those graphics and just kind of pull you into yeah. that and and have it make sense, mm -hmm. but yet calm you as well. That mm -hmm. kind of helped my storm anxiety as I would watch that and I would know, okay, it's here on the radar. It's going to be here at this time. So that's, I think, what kind of really pulled me in is I wanted to be able to be in that role of telling people when a storm was going to be coming and reassuring them and calming them and things like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how long you've been on, you know, we turn on WQID, you're doing the weather in front of the, the whole green screen or, is or it the green right? screen? It yeah. is the green screen. Yeah. Yep. Soon okay. to be a, a video monitor while we're, we're getting with the times soon here. But uh, yeah, I've been there for five years this September. So next month, it's been five years already. Wow. It's crazy. Yeah. And you do every morning? Is that true? Yeah. Monday yeah. through Friday. Got to be to work at three in the morning. Uh, it is early, but hey, I'm off at noon. So I can do stuff like this with you guys. Awesome. Some fun stuff. Wait, yeah. That's how it works. Three <laughs> yeah. a.m. Yeah. So what, what do you do at 3.30 a.m.? So through, as soon as I get in, it's all about looking through the dozens of forecast models that we have available to us. Technology has changed so much. So it used to be you might have maybe one or two forecast models. Now you've got a dozen practically and you got to go through each one of those and then look inside yourself and say, OK, which one of those 12 do you think is going to be right today? And I guarantee if you watch any of the other stations the same time you're watching ours, you're going to see the numbers are different. And that is why it's not just coming into a computer and saying, OK, this one says it's going to be 68. I'm going to go 68. It's looking at that number and then reflecting and say, OK, this one did a pretty good job yesterday. So I think I'm going to stick with this one, go something close to that. So it's an art form. Yeah, it's it's not an exact science, which is another reason yeah. I love it. It's just, it's very variable, I guess you could say. So do they give you the flexibility to pick it? Like you look through everything, you're like, you know what, I'm rolling with this. Absolutely, I'm in charge of my own forecast. Right. Um, nobody's telling me, you know, you have to pick this one or you have to do what James did the night before. Right. No, I'm, I'm totally in charge of it. 
good. Yeah, what type mm-hmm. of software, what, what type of program that you have? Like you just Google what's the weather today. And you then, literally can. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of this data, some of it's proprietary, but the majority of it, anybody at home can go look at. Now, whether you know how to read it is a different story, because, of course, that's where mm-hmm. the degree comes in. But. We use everything from computer modeling software. We have GIS software, which deals with landscape and mapping and things like that. And of course, radar software. There's a whole host of technology that we use. Whoa. And how, uh, like how often the weather is not like accurate, like what you said would not happen. How often does does that happen? So I've never personally written down or calculated my accuracy rate, but Mm -hmm. if I had to pull a number off of the air, it's definitely more than half. I would say, especially today's technology has gotten so much better. It's not perfect by any means, but it has surpassed anything we've had in just the last 10 years. I mean, 10 years ago alone, it's blown it out of the water. So more than half. I'd say, you know, if I had to pick a number, probably 80 to 85 percent of the time. We're spot on. You know, one of the hardest classes I took in college by far was the, it was like a weather, meteorology, whatever. I hands down was the hardest. And I, I. It's not like I had no interest in in that topic anyway. So it was more of the, what do you call the classes that they just take you, you take? General classes? Like, yeah, they yeah, took, like, just kind of get your credits class. and there, you yeah. can get a few you select. But for some reason that ended up being one and it was hard. Uh, yeah. So I can see why you're, you're you shoot to be right fifty percent fifty percent of the time because I I I could barely get fifty percent on what one was of the hard about it? I don't know. I mean, a lot of it is uh, obviously some science taking place, yes. which I've never been good in that. Um, but yeah, and like pressures and diff- I mean, I guess maybe I'm sure we'll get into that. Like, what causes a, a cold front to come running in, or you know, and any mm-hmm. of that type of stuff? It just wasn't. I'm like, I don't know. You know, ask Andrew. <laughs> I, but yeah, so you took, I'm sure, many of those classes um, and had to have enjoyed that that science element of that. Why don't you kind of talk about some of that and maybe give some examples on you know what whether cold front or tornado or thunderstorm, what, what is, uh, what's going on there? Sure. So you're totally right. The class is not for everybody. And it, and it's funny you mentioned that because when I got into this initially, my early classes, they were the general weather classes. You know, you were in there with agriculture majors. I was in there with engineering majors and even they, you know, the ones that are really good at math and science, they kind of struggled with it. It's a concept that's really kind of hard to wrap your brain around because when you think about the atmosphere and how it works, it's very fluid. It's exactly like water. It's like the ocean. So it can be something that's really hard to wrap your mind around. But um, it is challenging, no doubt. I mean, when I first went into the program, um, and I had two actually first attempts at this. My first attempt was at Iowa State. I tried that, didn't succeed for a multitude of reasons. But I like bringing that up because I think it goes to the fact that you shouldn't give up on something just because it didn't work out at the same time. I'm a big fan of I think you should go back and you should focus in on what went wrong, learn from that and try it again. And that's exactly what I did. Um, But in my early stages of that, it it was very challenging, not because of that class too, but you're talking about a math degree that you're having to get with this as well. You're taking the same classes that a structural engineer would take, the ones that build bridges, electrical engineers, physicists. I mean, the coursework is crazy. But in the end, When I got out and I graduated with my degree, it all made sense as to why we had to take all of these classes because everything just kind of molded itself together um, in that aspect. So it it is a challenging field. It's not for everybody. But, you know, here you have me, a person that was terrible at math. I started at the lowest level of math that you could possibly start at when I got into college and worked my way all the way up to the top to where I needed to be. It is possible. It's Mm -hmm. not impossible. I like that. Yeah. Well, why don't you give us some examples of the, like some pressure stuff? Like, so a th- what makes thunder and lightning? Something like that. Yeah, that's a great question. So thunderstorms are awesome. And in fact, that's probably the majority of the reason why people get into weather. They love thunderstorms. They want a storm chase. They want to see tornadoes. So thunderstorms are awesome things in that they have their own kind of cycle, if you will. They can have their own mind. Some, like I said earlier, they produce tornadoes. Some don't. It all depends on the ingredients that are there. But thunderstorms essentially form because you either have a 
front or you have a lot of lifting motion throughout the air. You get clouds that form from that. And you can get some really fast upward motion in these storms. I mean, sometimes you can compare it to winds in excess of 80, 90 miles an hour violently going upward into the atmosphere. And that's why some of these storms can get 60,000 feet tall. I mean, that's taller than where we're flying in airplanes, right? Mm -hmm. We're usually flying at 30,000 feet. So double that is how tall some of those storms can get. And like I said earlier, they're very dynamic. You know, some can be very severe. Some, you know, maybe produce hardly anything. So that's another kind of fun aspect to it, too, is especially on a severe weather day. It's like, OK, what kind of storms are we going to have today? You got to look at the ingredients, break them down and then decide from there. So um, I think there, there is a difference between when you see the weather and it says that's going to rain. I mean, sometimes it rains, sometimes it doesn't. But a lot of people, when we receive, for example, the warning, the like that's going to uh, uh, tornado is coming, yeah. let's say, and everybody gets that message on their on their cell phone. Um, like for the eight years that I've been here, I never seen the tornado, and I got that message a lot of times. Is that message more like a prevention for people to get ready if it happens, or people actually think and say that a tornado is really coming? What what? What is the deal there? That is the that's a great question, and I and I do get that a lot. And the one nice thing about um, tornado warnings and severe thunderstorm warnings is we've been really improving those in the last few years. So, for example, it used to be we would warn an entire county. It wasn't just a section of the county. We would just say, okay, Henderson County is under a tornado warning. We wouldn't tell you if it was north, south, central. It's the whole county. You got to take shelter. Nowadays, we've trimmed it down even further. We put out these little polygons for sections of the county. Mm -hmm. So if it's just in northern Henderson County, that's all we're going to warn. Um, and the reason for that, of course, is technology has advanced, forecasting has advanced, radar has advanced as well. But the other thing we're kind of working on now, too, is we're actually able to send out these warnings. So, for example, we can have a tornado warning and we're able now to tell you if it's radar indicated or spotter indicated. And for a lot of people, that can make a difference between taking action and not taking action. Because a lot of times the radar can say, oh, there's a tornado there. But somebody on the ground is on that same storm looking at it and like, we got nothing. Mm -hmm. There's probably rotation in the upper level of the storm, but it's not reaching the ground. And it's that, you know, kind of false alarming of people that really hurts that kind of a warning system. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're cutting down on that by not only clarifying, is it confirmed or is it not confirmed? But there's also new technology coming and it'll be dropping in about the next five years. Or instead of polygons, we're actually going to give whoever's in the path of this, say, tornado, a personalized assessment risk. For example, we're going to put it on a scale of one to five, and it's going to be updated either every five minutes or literally every minute as this storm is coming through. So it'll start with, okay, you have a one out of five risk right now. I want you to watch this. The next minute, it may go up to a two. Mm -hmm. The next minute, it may go to a three. And as soon as it gets higher and higher, that should push people yeah. to really say, hey, it's real. I'm now a five out of five. This thing is coming right at mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. That's more effective because the way I see is, okay, my parents came from Brazil to visit me, right? Mm -hmm. And then they all got the message, tornado is coming. And my mother was like, oh, what's going to happen? I was like, no, it will not come. This is just something. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, don't worry. So, they, we get them all the time. <laughs> as the time goes, it becomes ineffective. If every time yeah. you get that and nothing happens, you're like, no, nah, I'll just be here. Yeah. Nothing right. will happen. You know? Right. So, and then but windows that, bust open and, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. But that solution is effective, the one to yes. five. So when it's five, I, yeah, let's go to the basement. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. And see, you already have the Midwest mindset mm -hmm. because that's exactly what it is. And I have it too. I'm guilty. Every time when we're chasing in our storm chasing vehicle, if we're going through a tornado warned area, where is everybody? They are out on the front porch trying to look for that darn thing. It's like, you know what? We want visual confirmation that it's actually yeah. there. The alarm so. goes off. It brings people outside. Exactly. Let's go look. I don't know. So that's funny. Um, this is, I, I've always thought about too, where I look every day, I get on you know my phone and I swipe down, it's already on, it tells me the weather. And then if it's going to rain, it'll say like 82% chance of rain. Now, someone was telling me, and I guess you'll clarify this. Yes. Um, it, it doesn't mean 82% chance it's going to rain. What it means is in the coverage area of which I'm included, 82% of that area is expected to have rain. Is that true or false? So you're half right. I'm, okay. I'm gonna give you half credit on that because yes, it is true that it is not, 
you know, saying, oh, there's a greater than 50% probability it's going to rain. It's going to rain today. That's that's not how to look at it. So that number is calculated by that, by the coverage that's expected in a given area. But there's also a confidence level that gets thrown into that calculation. So, for example, you could have an 80% chance of rain, but that doesn't mean we're literally 80%. What we're doing is we're getting that 80% by throwing in, say, for example, 30% coverage but I have 50% confidence in that 30% coverage. It gets complicated. See if you can kind of, you know, break that down, but that's what that number means. Literally, it's the forecaster confidence plus the coverage expected. Oh, it's like a a snowball, like a combo percentage. How is your confidence calculated? Like, yeah, how how do you? So it's it's literally a number that you're thinking of in your head. You are coming yeah. up with your own confidence. Exactly. We're coming up with our own confidence yeah. level, right? Is there a dude out there who's every day is like, I'm 100% right today? I, I honestly have never met anybody that says I'm 100% confident today. Yeah. I feel like some of my friends were weather guys. They would say, they would say they're 100%. Yes. But now you see why I personally, personal preference, I hate using percentages mm-hmm. because people don't realize that, like you said, they don't know where that number came from. Right. They just assume that's where it's coming from because they saw it on TikTok or they saw it somewhere else. So that's why I like <laughs> isolated, scattered, widespread. Those mm-hmm. are much easier terms to understand. Mm-hmm. What's going on in the atmosphere when we get one of these just like quick boom, like let's lose for literally like a 40 second. I mean, quick, the, into where the point where like, you know, you might be doing dishes and you come out and you see the pavements wet and you're like, when, when did it rain? What did I miss? Like one of those fast, but then just gone. We've had a lot of those this summer, um, and a lot of that can be contributed to the drought that we've got going on, especially down here. The further <laughs> south of the Quad Cities you go, the worse the drought situation is. Most cases, I think we're in a level two or level three out of five drought. But with that lack of moisture, it's really hard to get a widespread storm going. These A lot of these have been very localized, very isolated in nature. They're not your typical, what we call popcorn summertime storms, where they cover like an entire county. These have been a lot more isolated isolated and that's kind of one of the things we look for when it turns in terms of the drought intensity if we notice that trend on radar with a lot of our storms we know that actual atmosphere is getting negative feedback from the ground the drought because there's just no moisture to evaporate because it's so dry Hmm. victor what do you know about a rain gauge oh have you ever heard of that i'm being (laughs) serious (laughs) and this is why i was thinking i didn't think he would know it's totally an old person and like i'm not picking on the old people here but my i know like my dad the minute it rains and the storm's done i mean you can't get out fast enough to look in the rain gauge and whether it's like a it more or less take this right and if it's cut off here the some old people they have them out in their yard and they want to come out and it says one inch two inch three inch four inch five inch and they want to see how much rain we just got and they're so captivated by it am i right or wrong no you're exactly right you are so right a lot of my neighbors do the same thing i'm guilty i have three rain gauges at my house i have three of them see you are the only person probably under 40. i don't know if you're under 40. i'm guessing i am yep okay i I don't know anyone under 40 that even messes with the rain gauge and you have three i have three of them i I know I, I love that. I love that. I, I did not think you would know what it was. Yeah, I didn't know what it was. I'm impressed. Yeah. Very yeah. impressed. You have three. Of, so you liked? Is that like a legit factor in your in your confidence uh, percentage that you? Absolutely. Like I got three rain gauges to support these these numbers. That's right. I want to double check and triple check. I love and that. So how accurate is a rain gauge? I've always wondered that anyways. They're really accurate. I mean, especially if you get a decent one, not one of those cutesy, you know, one right, that's got all the, the flowers and the yeah. prints on it. Yeah. I mean, getting a decent <laughs> funnel rain gauge, is, that's the way to go. Plus, you can also be lazy, too. I'm half lazy. I got a digital rain gauge that's it's all automated and it reads out on my weather station at home. So in most cases, unless I'm really questioning something, I really rely on the digital rain gauge most of the a time. A digital yeah. rain gauge? Yeah, it does it all for you. You stepped up the whole game. It goes to your <laughs> phone, I assume, or something. It's like... linked to my phone, computer. It goes out onto the internet so anybody can look at it. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. So I nice. didn't even know they make something like that. Oh, yeah. Because I've really only seen like the chins, like tchotchke uh, to you know, you get them at some fun event. And they're oh, handing yeah. out all the yeah. rain gauges. It has their logo on it, and it'll do the job. 
but it's nothing like to it probably what you're saying you know exactly you know. yeah it'll it does the job in most cases but it's those are the observations when i get those pictures in that i kind of like mm, i'm gonna put a little leniency factor on that a little bit kind of rounding it a little bit yeah. so well christmas is coming up that's I right know i'm getting yeah. a, i'm definitely getting you a get him a cone-shaped rain gauge yeah <laughs> have you had people on the street telling you the the weather wasn't accurate or oh all blaming. the time yeah, yeah. Well, something all the time or funny. someone has just said to you like at the grocery store or what so i am i like to say i am an equal opportunity offender i have been accused of ruining birthday parties of ruining weddings i was even blamed for ruining i'm not joking our bar mitzvah mm. so it's all on the board i mean right. and, and i don't take it personally because i know people realize you can't control the weather i'm just the messenger yeah don't shoot the messenger but it's like i understand you're frustrated i understand you want to yell at me and you want to do all caps on the keyboard and email and all that kind of stuff but yeah i all the time there's not a week that goes by where there's not something coming in the main joke i've always said about the weather guy is like how sweet is it you can have a job and they let you keep coming back yep and you're wrong half the time. <laughs> like how crazy, you know? If exactly. I, if, if I show up to work and I'm half, if I'm wrong half the time, <laughs> by Friday they're not asking me to come, they're gone. To come back. You're right, right. right? But so. a lot of people they forget about too is we're not the only ones. So if you watch ESPN. People are doing these brackets. They're oh, doing these sure. sporting events. So that's the other example I point to. I'm like, hey, I'm not the only one. Yeah, sport betting yeah. Uh, has become a big thing. And now exactly. that they have shows on that saying, hey, bet the the Pistons tonight. Yeah. It's a no brand. And they're wrong. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And that costs them money. <laughs> it does. You're just costing them, you know, a wedding, well, a bar you know, a life event. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's no big deal, right? right. When, uh, you guys have like in... Uh, Brazil, all the same stuff, like same news, thing. weather, right? Same thing, same yeah. thing. Yeah, the only thing we don't have there is snow. And, ra and oh, rain gauges. Yeah, and rain gauges, they had that too. <laughs> <laughs> so what time do you go live every day in the morning? So we start bright and early. 4.30 a.m. is our, our first newscast, and we're on the air until 7. Uh, and then we have another newscast from 11 to noon. So uh, when you're watching the news and it shows the weather, and then it may repeat it, are you making one cut or like is there like maybe 30, 40 minutes and next hour or whatever? How many times a day are you coming in and doing that between three and what do you say, noon? Three and noon, yeah. Okay. If I were to count them all in total, it ends up being about 18 to 19 times. Wow. Whoa. Because it is the morning show. It's a fast paced. We, we don't count on people sitting down to a morning show. They're coming and going because they're yeah. getting ready or they're leaving Absolutely. it out of the background. So we're back to the weather. Yep. Right. So is that because... It's different content, like you're going to talk about different things or just to catch the people that were not there earlier and make sure you catch the most the audience you possible can. Yep, it's mainly to catch those people that okay. weren't there earlier. And I'll, I'll mix it up sometimes, too. If there's a lot to talk about, I may do one thing in one hour and then change to something else in another hour if there's enough to... That's to put cool. in there yeah when this show is done i gotta show you i got asked uh remember illinois corn tv yeah they, they, oh. do, uh, they said hey we need a weather guy can you jump in i'm like what <laughs> and then i'm like yeah i can yeah so i did the green screen and i didn't that know yeah right there. but i didn't know i'm like point in the north <laughs> like you have to watch i didn't know what the heck is my first crack at it i gotta so see you this. tell me how i did uh, i can but, definitely but, give you a great for you folks out there uh, you can look up illinois corn tv on youtube YouTube and uh, <laughs> scroll through a few episodes, you'll find it. But yeah, that's it, crazy. Awesome. Nineteen times in between. At three least, and, you know? yeah. But that's also because you have the weather sponsor as well, right? And you need to put the sponsor, the company that's sponsoring yeah. that. Yeah, you've got I mean, that. You've yeah. got GMA, Good Morning America. I've got to do cut-ins between yeah. that yeah. as well. So it's a lot. That's Let's fair. talk about like your first couple of cracks. You know, like you've been practicing. You're ready for this. You got the job. And, you know, and they're like, Andrew, you know, it's day one. We're going live here at six. Like you got the sweat <laughs> running down the sides. Are you feeling like I'm ready to capture this or what, what was it like for you? So I came into this whole thing spoiled rotten because my best friend loves doing stuff with video audio. So before I even got to college, I set up my own website. And I did green screen videos, green screen weather forecasts for just my hometown, just for Sterling Rock Falls. In fact, the site is still up, but we don't do forecasts anymore. But having that practice and then getting right into the studio, I remember my first boss looking at me and he's like, are you sure this is your first time like right. doing this? He's like, you were so relaxed. You were just so chill. And I said, 
yeah, I had all this practice from from doing that. But I will say the first time I had to do it for my website, I was n- extremely nervous. Didn't know what to expect. Didn't know where this was going to go. Who was going to watch it? Was it going to take off? Was it going to be successful? But yeah. I, I really had it easy coming into the business itself because of that. But did you have someone that you looked up to, like to learn from? Who was that person? That was Neil Castor, who used to be at this station at WQAD. Oh. I, I watched him growing up. I actually got to come to the station when I was in high school and meet him. Um, he yeah. actually did a story with me to it at one point. But I just adored him. I, I loved the way he presented. I loved his mannerisms. Um, um, just a great guy overall. So that was my dream to come back to this station. I said, my ultimate goal, I want to come back to Channel 8. That's where I want to be. Um, and now I'm here. Yeah. And it's like, oh Do my any gosh. of the people on the news use, like, the, do they all use their real names? Or do mm-hmm. they, is there anyone who's like, you know, I'm whatever, and have their like uh, <laughs> fake name? You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. There's a lot of that. Yeah. Um, we have a couple at our specific station, and I think there's a, a few scattered around the others too, but it's not as common as it used to be, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, per se. Yeah. I but it does, it does happen. I just wanted to make sure we were really sitting yes. with Andrew. Here. And mine is real. There's no way I would make up a weird last name like the like one that Stutsky. I have right now. Oh, yeah. Like, how do you pull that out of yeah. thin air? Like Lauren Fulmer. <laughs> I got the same problem going. Right. Yeah. <laughs> do you use a teleprompter or you have everything in your, in your head? It is. It's all upstairs. Well, I'd say no by the 19th time for sure. Yeah. You know? If you don't have it memorized by then, I don't know what else to but tell you. But he's been you. there since three in the morning. You know, <laughs> so yeah, you're you're gathering it and getting it. And exactly. then you've been doing it now, Monday through Friday for five years? Would you It'd say? be the morning shift. I'd be coming up on three years just about. So the morning about shift two, is two, what we're, years. that's like where we want to be, right? Like it's not bad. It's it's the second to the highest position you can get. So what? In that's what, I think. what is the yeah. first? So the highest is the evening shift. That's what Chief Meteorologist James O'Hara has. Really? That's the top spot on the totem pole. I would yep. think most people watch in the morning. Surprisingly, it's it's leaning more that way. We are tending to get more people that watch in the morning as opposed to the evening. Yeah. yeah. That's weird. The weather doesn't do me a bit of good at night. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know. know if it's like old TV habit viewing that does that or, or what the deal is, but yeah. Right after the Wheel of Fortune or something. I guess, or, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what type of audience do you guys have? Do you know genders and demographics like that? We do get all that information. Of course, for, for sales purposes, we're going to know yeah. what age group is watching, what gender, where are they watching from? Um, I, I will say it's diverse. It's yeah. it's pretty diverse. I know if, if I ask a lot of my friends that are my age, I'm in my, my mid to late 30s, like, do you watch the news? Like, no, we don't watch the news. Mm-hmm. And I know a lot of the younger generation doesn't watch the news either. So, you know, you got to kind of take that into effect too. So that's why you're seeing, you know, our station, other stations branching out. We're doing YouTube. We're doing other streaming because mm-hmm. people are cutting the cord, yeah. you know, not doing cable satellites. So you yeah. have to adapt. And, oh, yeah. and that's what we're doing. That's yeah. cool. That's mm-hmm. cool. What uh, what do you like to do in your spare time, like outside of, of work and weather? You know what what else kind of gets you get gets you inspired and you like to do? Sure. So never I never stop learning. Um, love going to seminars. I do some online learning too because we're always learning new things when it comes to weather and all this technology. Uh, speaking of tech, I do love messing with technology, whether it's computers. Um, like my friend Kyle, he's got the audio video set up. I get to get involved with him a few times. Uh, anything outside, I've got a, an active golden retriever. He's going to be four this year. So we're always out hiking and exploring all the trails, um, hanging out with friends, of course, and family's a big thing too yeah. as well. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I saw your dog on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> he is a cutie. Yeah. <laughs> well, and there's a lot more, a lot of trails and parks and stuff uh, in the Quad Cities and even just to walk along the river. You know, you've got plenty of stuff to do, I'm sure. Oh, we are so fortunate. I yeah. mean, a lot of the parks around here are just gorgeous. So many trails that you can explore. So very mm-hmm. lucky on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just knowing the rainy day. <laughs> no, even on a rainy day, I'll go out too. Like the the weather will not stop me. I'll just put the my dog has a raincoat. Just put it on him, and I'll have my umbrella, and away we go. That's cool. We're what's, gonna play. Uh, what comes to mind when like you say, what's the stupidest thing you've ever said or done or on on air? Like oh, you know, you get gosh. tongue-tied for something, man. <laughs> you know, like, say the wrong name, like I almost did with you. <laughs> you know, something. Oh gosh, it's it's hard to count because there's so many of them. Um, most recently, I think I said something about like Arizona is two hours ahead of us. I got the wrong time zone. It's like, right. no, they're two hours behind. And yes, I got an email about it. Right. The, the, the viewers will let you know <laughs> if you're wrong. They of definitely course. will. Um, it, it, it's so easy to happen too. Especially you ever like the case of the giggles. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. That's what would kill oh me. absolutely. Yeah, I've dropped the clicker. Uh, you know, our little mm-hmm. advanced thing. I've dropped that on the floor. I've definitely got the giggles, especially our our morning. My morning co-anchor David Bowman is just hysterical. He's a very witty person. So I'll be over there at the green screen, you know, doing the forecast, and all of a sudden I'll look over and he's laughing. And me just looking at him starts me laughing because I know it's something stupid that they're talking about over there on the desk because they never pay attention to me anyway, which was okay. They got their own thing going on, but it happens. We were trying to do some outtakes uh, or like just trying to like do some like, hey, tune into the talk about a pocket. You know? <laughs> and we, I wish we, 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 we couldn't could, do it. <laughs> I'm talking 35, 40 minutes of like getting to talk about it and then he would start laughing or talk. it just it became a com- and then the adam who's running the camera he's like you idiot like quit it's it's not that hard you know and we couldn't get it done and then we're like okay okay <laughs> and lose it again but yeah i love one of my favorite part is news bloopers uh, yes uh, i could get lost in a rabbit hole on youtube just watching people mm-hmm. you know think that you know forget the hot mic or or say something really dumb oh, yeah. and it's like golly and now in today's world you, you mess up one time and it's out there forever forever yes and, and yeah. for for us honestly i can say that happens if not on a daily basis a semi-daily basis there's something that goes off the rails there's a camera swinging where it's not supposed to be swinging because those are robotic now um but that's like i think that's part of the the fun factor of doing this because you just don't know what's going to happen mm-hmm. and you've got people coming along with you for the ride yeah at the same that's time. how radio was mm-hmm. um and i really enjoyed that a lot of just being you know and with radio you know you kind of got to like paint this picture because people don't have the visual of yes. it yes so you know you have to and, and one even being a dj with in between song you just and you know this from people who watch you and they'll tell you know um I mean, I really enjoy seeing you or I really enjoy you uh, on the show. You, you know, it, ma- it makes you, it's uh, humbling, if you will. And you sometimes can forget because you just get in your routine of doing your job and you can forget that you have people out there that genuinely, you know, look forward to seeing you and hearing you and see what you got for the day. You, you play a bigger role in people's day, even though you just think you're doing this weather gig. Um, you know, you, you play a bigger role in people's day than you would oh, know. Yeah. Yeah, and you, you like you said, you're reminded of that. Mm-hmm. I mean, for every one bad email I get that comes in, there's probably 25 good ones mm-hmm. for that one bad. So mm-hmm. it's nice to have those little reminders. Yeah, yeah, it is. That was one thing at the radio. I always feel like you guys, <laughs> we get, it's you know, you sit in this, in radio, you're in this box with a bunch of padding in a computer, you know, and you're just talking to yourself. Mm-hmm. And it can be really easy to just get in that routine of, you know, you're, you're, it's just you. But there is a lot of people out there that that are like might be you don't know what they're going through and and you have an opportunity to shine some positivity in in their day you know you and the whole crew get to do that at wqad that's cool well said yeah we're starting people's day that early in the morning so we want to make sure it's on a a good note make them laugh a little bit make them smile but also make sure they have everything else they're looking for now this isn't in your realm but i notice in the morning i'm usually at the y they i don't watch the news but it'll be up there and they do these traffic cams yep. where they show like six different interstates and that early in the morning, six, there's not a car in sight. I'm like, why are we, why are we doing it? I just wonder, I know you're not, that's not the weather one, but I'm just kind of curious sometimes, like what is the purpose? What are you trying to capture here to let people know? So most oftentimes we're doing it because somebody that we paid a whole lot of money to told us we should be doing it. They're, they're called television consultants. You <laughs> sure. might have had them in radio even too. Yeah, I'm sure. But yeah, when I when I got on the morning gig and, and you know having to do the traffic, but I'm like, what traffic? Like we have traffic. Yeah. Now, especially with the old I-74 bridge, I could see it. We we definitely had traffic, but now the new one is wide open and it would take a huge catastrophic event to close down the new <laughs> I-74 bridge. Can you imagine like four lanes of traffic just completely closed? Well, I like, hope, hope not. There'd be a yeah. giant meteor that would have to come in to cause that to mm-hmm. happen. But um, but yeah, we, we have to cover the traffic. People, I guess, want to know what's going to happen. I think it's more applicable in the winter, right. you know, road conditions and stuff well, like especially that. Especially in but, the noon and you yeah. know, throughout. But yeah, it's just something, oh, it's... Like oh, yeah. makes me laugh. I'm like, good thing they showed us those I know, empty right? roads this morning. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. There's mornings where I'm like, 
I don't know what else to say. Like, how do I describe this? I say, it's clear, it looks good, we're flowing, we're, I'm, I'm like, I'm running out of words to describe Quad City's traffic here, guys. I, right. I don't know what else to say. Right. Oh <laughs> so I'm just God. like pushing that button as fast as I can, we're moving right along. <laughs> so what's your goal here? I mean, do you, you wanna get to that evening weather? Is that, I mean, that's the goal? That's the ultimate goal. Um, and you wanna stay local? Or would you like to see yourself on a national one? That weather channel, would that be a, a reason? will go that's a that's a really good question so I, I definitely want to stay in the midwest um so i'm thinking i would i would definitely want to do the chief spot see how that works for a little while because that's that was definitely my goal all along so um that would be nice but i'm not going to rule out maybe somewhere regional if, if the opportunity presents itself mm -hmm. but i definitely don't want to leave the midwest mm -hmm. because everywhere else has really boring weather except for the hurricane yeah. prone areas so yeah this yeah. is this is definitely home. And do you do storm chasing as well? Like you go... I do. Yes, I yeah. do. In like a crazy, cool, weird van looking thing, or do you just go out and you got your own? So it's kind of a combination of both. So like if I'm on vacation, I'll take my personal vehicle. But what's nice about our station, um, we're the only ones in the market that have that storm chasing truck. And I actually brought it with me to, to drive here today. But um, the beast, so a big souped up Ford F-250 super duty truck that's jacked up big tires i mean the thing looks crazy it looks really cool but yeah we take that truck out we don't drive it into a storm because oh. my boss would kill me he's like <laughs> you know you dent it you buy it so we're not going to go there <laughs> but um yeah we take it out when severe weather's here it's got a camera on the roof we can look in all directions and we feed that live back to the station because Great. there's no truth like ground truth actually being there and seeing what's going on mm-hmm Man. That's crazy. Yeah. Did, did anything crazy happen like a storm, a tornado getting close to you or not? That thing, we have caught no tornadoes yet. Right. Um, come close a couple of times, but no enchiladas quite We've yet. We've had a few here in Cameron, and uh, or one in Cameron or two. I don't, bad storms have uh, definitely done that. Um, but yeah, I, I've heard an old wise tale, I don't know, but they say Galesburg area is in this kind of like uh weird rut that they say is tornado proof i don't know how how true that is but i know i've been in the area for gosh 30 some years i'm still waiting to see one right yeah. <laughs> every time his phone goes and when my phone goes off i'm gonna start thinking victor's just sitting there. <laughs> victor don't care <laughs> Man, oh, I, um, I hope you enjoyed coming in today, Andrew. Um, this has been a blast. Oh, yeah. uh, well, thank I you. Love, I, when he said you were coming, I was already like, I legit remember the weather class. That was no joke. <laughs> and I, like, yeah. you're, so kudos to you for, for not only taking that class, like 60 others. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, best of luck to oh. you on everything going forward. I hope you enjoyed our time here in the Talk About It podcast. Yeah, this has been great. Thanks for having me. And you know where to find me. So. Yeah, yeah. Thank absolutely. You for coming. Yeah. Andrew <laughs> Stusky with WQAD, guys. I'm Lauren Fulton. I'm Victor Dentist. And we've had another episode of Talk About It podcast. Thank you so much. See you guys next week. Thank you for watching this episode of the Talk About It podcast. I'm Victor Dentist. I'm Lauren Fulmer. And uh, we would encourage you guys to subscribe to the channel. Um, and don't forget to hit the bell. Uh, it's going to be right below the video. So you hit guys... the bell. <laughs> so you know when the next episode is up. All we right? appreciate all the support. Thank you.